In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create Facebook instant forms that generate tons of leads. Instant forms, or lead forms as they used to be called, is a great way to inexpensively generate a large volume of leads on Facebook, but you have to know how to set them up the right way. So I'm in an example Facebook ad account, and I'm gonna quickly go ahead and create a leads campaign. Now, if you've got the new campaign objective menu called ODAX, which is what I've got in front of me here, if you go ahead and select leads, that'll take you through to a place where you can create instant forms. If you've got the old campaign objective menu, then you're going to need to select lead generation as a campaign objective. Obviously, I've got the new one, so I'm gonna go ahead and select leads here. Now, we're not gonna mess around with any of the other campaign stuff. I want this video to be specifically focused on the instant forms. Um, so we're just gonna to touch on the few things that mean those are gonna be possible and available in this campaign. So if I just jump to the ad set level, you need to make sure that you've got instant form selected, which is now actually the default. So if you do select leads in the new ODAX campaign objective menu, you will see instant forms. And then that means we can jump to the ad level. And then as I said, we're not gonna enter in any of the other ad information or anything like that. That's not what this video is about. We are going to scroll down to instant form. And then we're going to go ahead and click on create form. So for those of you that aren't familiar with instant forms, the way they work is when someone clicks on an ad within Facebook or Instagram, instead of being taken through to that company's website or Messenger or WhatsApp or any of the other destinations you could be taken to, Instead, you are kept within Facebook and Instagram and you're presented with a form where you can submit your contact information that then allows that company to follow up with you. And that's how you basically say, yes, I'm interested in this thing. And that's how you become a lead. And because it's so much easier and you don't have to leave the app, we often find that you generate a lot more leads and they cost less when you use instant forms as opposed to other lead generation methods like sending people to your website. That's one of the major advantages, just to explain what they are. Of course, we're going to see what they look like on the right-hand side as we go through um, this process, okay? So I'm gonna walk you through it step by step. So firstly, let's give it a name. Um, the example I'm going to give as we go through this is a roofing business. <laughs> And what we're going to be offering as part of this um, this what, this lead generation ad that obviously people click on an Insta form to submit their details is a free roofing survey. That's a very common initial offer for a roofing business. So we're just gonna go ahead and call this roofing survey form. Then the first thing we need to decide is the form type, right? Do we want a form that is going to generate as many leads as possible, more volume, that's the default, or do we want to go with higher intent? Now you can see the default is more volume. If I click on higher intent, you may have just seen at the bottom there that a review screen is added. If we just quickly open this up, so this is what Meta says, the review gives people a chance to look over their info before they submit it. It's basically the sort of thing you're probably familiar with where people are about to submit their info and then you get almost like a pop-up, although it's within this form that says, are you sure about that? Are you sure you want to give over this information? And then of course, some people that are not so sure, that are a little bit on the fence, not that interested to go, well actually, maybe I won't give over my contact information to this company, they're gonna follow up with me, I'm not that interested. So that's why having, if I go back to form type, this higher intent adds in an extra review screen. It's not gonna get you more leads, certainly. It's going to get you less, and it's going to probably filter out the ones that aren't as interested. You're putting a bit of friction in the process. You're you're basically saying, you know, if, if, you're, if you're on the fence about this, you're not that bothered, don't, don't bother, just go ahead and click off. So I'd recommend that most people start with more volume because more leads, all things being equal is better. But if you do find, if you or your sales team is following up these people and finding they aren't converting. I actually thought about converting. <laughs> or worse, you aren't able to get in touch with them as much as you'd like and you're wasting a lot of time, a lot of resource on that follow-up process, then that's when you want to go ahead and switch to, to higher intent. But for most people, I'd recommend going more volume. And if that means you get a few more, uh, you know, no-shows when you try and call them up and things like that, that's fine. I don't think that's, that's the end of the world for most businesses. Then we get into the intro. We've got a couple of choices on the image. So this is an image that's gonna go here behind the sort of little profile picture, that's in this case associated with my page, it's gonna go in this spot right here. And what I mostly recommend you do is use the image from your ad. Now we haven't set up the ad, so there's no image here, but you'd want to use the image from your ad because whatever image you use is going to provide some continuity, some, some, some consistency between the ad and the instant form. What you don't want to do is if you had a very different image on your instant form to what you had in your ad, people could click on your ad and then feel like they were in the wrong place and that maybe, oh, did I click on the wrong thing? And they might, might go back. Particularly those that aren't familiar with sort of interacting with instant forms, which is still you know, a good chunk of the Facebook and Instagram user base at this point, particularly if you're offering something perhaps is pitched an older demographic, which to some extent, roofing uh, in this case is going to be. So I would definitely go with use the image from your ad, nice and consistent. It's just gonna display up here. It's not a big part of 
the uh, the instant form um, and it's just going to make people feel like they've ended up in the right place to provide that consistency obviously we haven't got one in so it hasn't popped up there but you would see the image just up there when you go through this process that's what you will see okay then we've got a greeting now this is recommended but not necessary it's really important to remember when you're creating an instant form that yes you've got someone to click on the ad but you haven't yet sold the lead. You need to convince someone to go on and take those next steps and actually become a lead. And that's what this instant form is about to do. So the first thing to do with the greeting is to affirm the action that you want people to take. So in here, we might have, for example, sign up for your free roofing survey. Okay, that's gonna have very consistent messaging between the ad copy and here. And that's going to make people feel like they've ended up in the right place, right? It's gonna be very consistent with the copy in the ads. Free roofing survey, great, that's what I want to, to go ahead and sign up for. Maybe someone's got a leak or they've got an issue and they wanna get it checked out, great. Um, and then we can include additional details beneath that. So we would usually have something like, enter your info and one of our team members will be in touch within 24 hours. Oh, slight typo there. One of the things that you see consistently across all digital marketing and Facebook and Instagram advertising is definitely the same, is that the more people understand the process, the more willing they are to take the next step. Right? If you think about when you're thinking about buying something new, often you're like, what's the next step? How do I do this? How do I find out more information? What, what, what do I, people don't like to be in that place of not knowing what to do. It's an uncomfortable feeling. So when you can provide information in an instant form, you can do the same with the ads, same with your landing pages, um, in other parts of Facebook and Instagram advertising, just being clear on what's going to happen always helps. So they've clicked on the ad and this is the first thing they see, right? Is this greeting, which is recommended, sign up for a free roofing survey, enter your info and one of our team members will be in touch within 24 hours. Great, they know what to expect, which is fantastic. You can of course remove it if you want to. If you're finding your leads are costing lots and you don't want to have you know, the extra steps in there um, and just wanna make this as bare bones as possible, you can remove the greeting, but uh, I think it's good to have it in there. I think it's gonna help with lead quality um, and we have actually seen it also help with conversion rates. Again, because we're providing extra info. So once people see this, they would click on this next button and they would then be taken to the questions page, all right? Obviously, this is where we get the information from your prospects that you need in order to be able to follow up with them and deliver on whatever it is that you um, offered in the ad itself. So we start with a description, which is gonna go in above the sort of contact fields. And again, we're just gonna reiterate, nothing wrong with that, what we want people to do. like that, right? Just do this action. This is what you get. Nice, simple, straightforward. Okay, so the default that Facebook puts in here is email and full name. Both are useful, but there's absolutely one other thing that I'd recommend you go ahead and add in, and that if you click on add category contact fields, that is a phone number. And the reason why a phone number is really, really important is because when you're following up with your prospects, if you're just doing so via email, you will end up with a very, very low contact rate. The percentage of people that you end up actually speaking to, actually getting in touch with, will be very low. Partly that's because emails are easy to ignore. And the other part is because if you haven't emailed these people before, they've never emailed you, really difficult to get past things like spam filters or people thinking it's spam, forgetting that they've signed up or not remembering, say, your business name or something like that and it just getting um, deleted and not even making it into their inbox, right? Even if they are really interested, which is painful and, and a waste of your advertising budget. So I absolutely recommend you put in your phone number and that would be my primary way of following up with your prospects would be to call them. Very, very important. You wanna call them and you want to call them as quickly as possible. Now, what that looks like for your business is gonna vary depending on your business. Now, some businesses have a sales team, like my agency, we have a sales team. If you have a sales team, you can probably follow up with prospects within sometimes 15 minutes, half an hour of them becoming a lead and you've got people ready to go and do this all the time. In other scenarios, perhaps you contact your prospects twice a day, you know, once first thing, you go through the ones that came in, you know, during the night and the morning, and then at the end of the day, you go and contact the ones that have come through in that day, but you don't want to be leaving it a long time. I've spoken to businesses before that say that the lead quality is not very good. And when we dig a little bit deeper, we say, well, how often are you follow up with prospects? And they say something like twice a week. And you think, well, okay, if someone becomes a lead on say a Tuesday and you don't follow up till the Friday because you do Monday and Friday, let's say, oh, that's an issue, right? That person's far less likely to convert than if you contact them straight away. A, you're more likely to get in touch with them and B, you're more likely to get 
them to actually go ahead and sign up for that free roofing survey because it's fresh in their mind and they're probably um, interested, they've taken an action, you wanna keep that momentum going. So that's really, really important, definitely definitely ask for a phone number. In terms of other information, if you go through the ad categories, you'll see there are um, other things you can ask for, like contact fields, like street address, which could be important for, let's say, a roofing survey, user information. We've already got names in there, demographic questions. You have to start get careful with what you ask for, obviously. Work info, and then in some cases, national ID number. For the most part, even if some of this information is useful, I would recommend not looking to add it into your lead form. You can get all that information once you make contact with your prospect prospect, ideally over the phone, right? Um, for example, this is a roofing survey offer. You could think that street address would be really important, but if you ask people to enter their street address, some people won't be bothered to do that, or not even not bothered, but you know, they're on their phone, they get distracted by something else, a WhatsApp message comes in, they leave, they never come back. Reducing the time it takes for them to complete this information means you get more leads. Or well, you know, they're watching TV, the doorbell rings, there's all sorts of distractions why people might not fill something out. And if you're asking for a street address, oh, okay, you gotta enter in all the details, you know what it's like, it can be annoying, can't it? So get all that information once you've made contact with the prospect not in this lead form. If you've got you know tens of thousands of leads coming in and you need ways to filter them because you you don't have the resource to get in touch, okay, you can filter some out more with questions um, in here, but that's just something that's important to be aware of. You should also be aware that Facebook will auto-populate these fields if that information is associated with someone's Facebook or Instagram account. So sometimes email, for example, might be someone's old email address. How many of us signed up to Facebook 15 years ago 12 years ago, and that's no longer an email address that's in use. Phone numbers are far more likely to be common, just another reason to put in the phone number, okay? So that's typically how we would approach those questions. Don't ask for anything that you don't need, and this is going to be what we go with, I'd say, 90% of the time. Full name, um, email address, phone number. We can get every other piece of info we need once we get in touch with the prospect, okay? Okay, and then we move on to privacy. Now, when I've talked about instant forms and lead generation campaigns in the past, one of the questions I always get is, do I need a privacy policy? Do I actually need a privacy policy? Like, actually? Yes. You can run Facebook ads, Instagram ads without a website, but you cannot run ads that are designed to generate leads that process your users' information without a privacy policy. It's non-optional, right? Find a way, even if you just have a one page website that just hosts a privacy policy or you host it somewhere else and you provide a link, then you have to do that. And by the way, you can't include, you know, a link to like a PDF or something downloadable like that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pop in uh, my company's URL with privacy policy, just so it allows us to continue through this process. Oh, and you can see here, look, your privacy policy link can't go directly to a PDF file, JPEG, image, or download. It has to be actually linked somewhere. And then link text, if you don't put anything in, it's gonna to default to this. Look, view Ben Heath's privacy policy, because that's the name of my Facebook page. We won't, we won't want to put in, um, you know, lead guru's privacy policy, if they differ. For a lot of you guys, it won't, but that's just how it's displayed in this privacy policy section. Of course, almost no one is going to read this, um, but you need to have it, so rules of the game, get it done. Okay, and then custom disclaimer. So there's default disclaimer, and then there's you can add a custom disclaimer. The businesses that need to use custom disclaimers, it's usually pretty obvious, you're probably already aware. It's uh, businesses that of, often operate in special categories if you're dealing with anything with finance or insurance or housing and that sort of stuff you need to provide more information saying, we won't do this with your information, we will guarantee that we'll do this for you and all that sort of stuff. So you're probably already aware of that stuff. And then we get into completion. Now this is once they've submitted their information, gone through the questions, privacy policy, boom. This is what they're going to be presented with. Now, of course, the image, remember, that's gonna be whatever we've got in our ad, that's fab. Then we've got headline, thanks, all, you're all set. Quite like that, I often leave that as is. And then we want to, in the description, reiterate what's going to happen. What can someone expect and how should they prepare? So someone from our team will be in touch within, let's say 24 hours, which we've said before. Please keep an eye on your phone. And that's great because it tells people to expect a phone call. So when they're getting a phone call from an unknown number later that afternoon or the next morning or whatever, Maybe they go, oh yeah, I remember, it's that roofing company that's come to, you know, they're gonna come take a look at the roof and see how much work we need and all that sort of stuff. Then beneath that, we can send the people that have taken this action to do certain things. Now, very few people are going to do this, 
bearing in mind there's that. We can have a call to action button. So that's this demonstrated down here. View website is the default. You can have call business if you just want them to call you straight away or download. People often use instant forms to provide like lead magnets, free guides, reports, PDFs, things like that. Um, for a business like this, where it's a roofing company, we're absolutely gonna go ahead and use a view website. We could just send them to the homepage of a website. If we did want to, for example, we could send them to a different location. We could put in something like view portfolio if we're, maybe that's not quite right. That might be work with a roofer, you know, to demonstrate the, the pretty roofs that you've, you know, put onto buildings. <laughs> Um, you could say something like view testimonials is often a good one because you can, if you've got a page on your website that demonstrates the good work that you've done before, then that can help convert your prospects. Because let's say someone's waiting for this phone call to book in the free roofing survey. If once they've submitted this, they have a quick, you know, five minute flick around your website and they take a look at your testimonials and stuff like that, that might then help them convert when someone goes around to do that survey. Obviously, you then want to add in a link. So if it was view testimonials, then, you know, we'd want to make sure we had a test demonials page that was being linked to, right? Um, same with our uh, portfolio or just the homepage on our website, either way. Not that many people are gonna do this, but can help with conversion rates. Just have a think about what is your offering. You can, of course, use download if you're using instant forms to advertise a lead magnet or something downloadable. Then we go ahead and click publish and that's it. This instant form is now created. You can put the rest of the campaign together, the ad, ad set level, all that sort of stuff and run this campaign. You can, of course, test different instant forms. If there were elements that you wanted to test different offers, you'd need different ads and different instant forms for those. Um, if you wanted to test even different copy within an instant form, um, you can create multiple versions and split test them and run all sim simultaneously and all that sort of stuff to find the best options. If you are running a lead campaign, lead generation campaign using an instant form, very important that you get this part right, can make a massive difference to your cost per lead. Okay, before you go, something I wanna quickly mention, and that's my company, Lead Gurus, Facebook and Instagram advertising services. So we offer done for you Facebook and Instagram ad services. We create, manage, and optimize campaigns for our clients. If you're interested in finding out more, you can book a call with one of my team members. There'll be a link in the video description below. Click on that, go through to our website. You can book a slot in that's uh, that you know that works for you. We do have a 3K per month minimum budget requirement, so please only book a call if you meet that criteria. But go ahead and book a call and you know find out some more and see how we can help, and hopefully we get a chance to work together. And now that you know how to put instant forms together, it's really important that you get the rest of your lead campaign correct from the targeting level, the ads, all those details. I show you exactly how to do that in this video here. It's a complete walkthrough where I show all the elements. Go ahead and check it out.